A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. Thus says the Lord, This is what I commanded my people. Listen to my voice. Then I will be your God, and you shall be my people. Walk in all the ways that I command you, so that you may prosper. But they obeyed not, nor did they pay heed. They walked in the darkness, they walked in the hardness of their evil hearts, and turned their backs, not their faces, to me. From the day that your fathers left the land of Egypt, even to this day, I have sent you untiringly, all my servants, the prophets. Yet they have not obeyed me nor paid heed. They have stiffened their necks and done worse than their fathers. When you speak all these words to them, they will not listen to you either. When you call to them, they will not answer you. Say this to them, this is the nation that does not listen to the voice of the Lord its God or take correction. Faithfulness has disappeared. The word itself is banished from their speech. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. If today, if today you, you hear, hear his, his voice, voice harden, harden not, not your hearts. hearts. Come, let us sing joyfully to the Lord. Let us acclaim the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us joyfully sing psalms to him. If, if today, today you hear, hear his, his voice, voice, harden not, not your hearts. hearts. Come, let us bow down in worship. Let us kneel before the Lord who made us, for he is our God, and we are the people he shepherds, the flock he guides. If, if today, today you hear, hear his, his voice, voice harden, harden not, not your hearts. hearts. Oh, that today you would hear his voice. Harden not your hearts as at Meribah, as in the day of Massa in the desert, where your fathers tempted me. They tested me, though they had seen my works. If, if today, today you hear, hear his, his voice, voice harden, harden not, not your, your hearts. hearts. Glory and praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Glory and praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Glory and praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Jesus was driving out a demon that was mute. And when the demon had gone out, the mute man spoke, and the crowds were amazed. Some of them said, By the power of Beelzebul, the prince of demons, he drives out demons. Others, to test him, were asking of him a sign from heaven. But he knew their thoughts, and he said to them, Every kingdom divided against itself will be laid waste, and house will fall against house. And if Satan is divided against himself, how will his kingdom stand? For you say it is by Beelzebul that I drive out demons. If I then drive out demons by Beelzebul, by whom do your own people drive them out? Therefore they will be your judges. But if it is by the finger of God that I drive out demons, then the kingdom of God has come upon you. When a strong man, fully armed, guards his palace, his possessions are safe. But when one stronger than he attacks and overcomes him, he takes away the armor on which he relied and distributes the spoils. Whoever is not with me is against me, and whoever does not gather with me scatters. The Gospel of the Lord. Just a quick couple of clarifications about the Gospel reading before I'd like to look a little bit more at the prophet Jeremiah. What Jesus is saying is even if I am casting out demons by the power of the prince of demons, that's still good news for you because it means there's civil war going on in hell. 
That's good news. Even in that sense, it's good. And then he also says, he talks about the strong man fully armed who guards his palace. That's Satan. That is Satan. But when someone stronger comes, Jesus, the battle is over and the spoils can be divided. So, just as a way of clarifying. But I wanted to concentrate a bit more on the prophet Jeremiah. Chapter 7 of the book of the prophet Jeremiah includes what is known as the temple sermon, where Jeremiah is standing in the middle of the temple condemning the people for what they have been doing, okay, or what they haven't been doing. Now, what's going on? When, when you got this word of God that comes to Jeremiah that talks about how these are hardened and evil hearts, they turn their backs, not their faces to me, how do you understand the possibility of somebody, in fact, just being given the great gift of liberation from slavery than doing something like that? It's very, very difficult to try to understand. It's a little bit like what Jesus said to James and John, which I referred to, I think, earlier this week, where I said that... Uh, he says, no one, no one who does a mighty work in my name will soon be able to speak badly of me. You know, it doesn't work that way. So what's going on? Instead, what's happening here is that the people have not turned their backs on God consciously, just effectively. What are they doing? They are putting their trust in the temple of the Lord. They've come to be convinced, for reasons that I won't go into right now, that the temple of the Lord could not be destroyed. And so, as long as they had the temple, they were good to go, no matter what. That's the way the people turned their backs on God, not knowing that that's what they were doing, thinking that by going through the motions and holding on to the temple, everything was good enough. And it's not, because there's a lack of heart in the activities. They're going through the motions of respecting the Sabbath and making the sacrifices and reckoning that the temple is the temple and nothing can ever happen and therefore nothing can happen to us. And they don't have a love relationship with their Savior God anymore. That's the problem that Jeremiah is facing. And that's why they won't listen to him as well as any of the other prophets because from their point of view, hey, they've got it all together already. How easy it is to place our hope and our trust and our reliance on what isn't going to work but we confuse it with something that we think will work. As one person put it, it's not by accident that we refer to the, you know, the prince of darkness as a fallen angel, whose name, by the way, was the bearer of light, Lucifer. Okay? Because, as he says, it's easy to mistake highly polished brass for gold. Nobody mistakes terracotta for gold. You know, it's got to be that similarity that confuses people. So, if it's the temple of the Lord, it's got to be good. It's got to be okay. It's got to be sufficient. But it isn't. Because the temple, after all, is just a building. It's what goes on in the heart when you're in that temple that makes all the difference in importance. So, as we celebrate this Eucharist today, we might want to hold ourselves accountable and say, okay, am I going through the motions? Or am I committed to being a person in love with the Lord Jesus? Let us stand and pray.